Hello everyone, it's that special time of the week again. It's time for another installment of Cape TV. As always, I'm your TV watching, podcast talking, limousine riding, high flying. Yeah, I don't do any of that other <laughs> shit. I was, I'm just lying, Matt. I'm just lying out of my ass. And also, Matt's here, everybody. <laughs> Lie, lying on the internet you'd think someone would just go on and do that uh my, 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 my uncle works for nintendo and he's also <laughs> in the cia and like i can hax you bro <laughs> foolproof everyone will believe that <laughs> <laughs> how's your week been matt how you doing pretty good pretty good been been chuffing away at the those comics those comic reviews yeah it's, it was a big week wasn't it for all sorts of stuff it was. Of course, for everyone who wants to hear me and Matt talk more about comics and not just comic TV shows, be sure to listen to the Comic Multiverse over on the Cape Joel channel or on SoundCloud, where you can also download this show you're listening to right now, which is Cape TV. Shameless plug, shameless plug. <laughs> ad revenue, ad revenue. Yeah, if, w w w we need it, man. You want to know why so many of your favorite YouTubers are on Edge recently? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the gold rush might be over but you know what that's that's depressing we need to talk about fun stuff like supergirl which came out this week matt yeah supergirl started back up this week for its final push to the season finale which is coming up i think in may sometime yeah all our shows uh, are ending in may if i'm not mistaken yes this episode was called ace reporter mm -hmm. uh it was a pretty cool episode it was as the title suggests kara being the reporter she is she she no longer works at catco um she got fired from there because she posted articles on her own blog and snapper car didn't like that oh snapper car's so in the show now yeah yeah He's Kara's boss. Oh, that's that's fun. Snapper Carr, who of course has a long history with the Justice League. He was like their boy, wasn't he, for a bit? Like the team boy? A little bit, yeah, a little bit. In this one, he's kind of like a gruff, Perry White sort of guy. Mm, Perry White, but not Perry White. <laughs> yeah, and um, uh, Biomax featured in this episode, which was very strange because Biomax is a Green Arrow villain. <laughs> so... I'm hey, not, hey, hey, not sure why he's here. Hey, you know what? Green Arrow doesn't fight any Green Arrow villains on his shows. He just takes all the <laughs> Batman villains who they're never going to use in any of the movies, so it's fine. That, that's, that's true. That's true. Uh, but yeah, he showed up, and uh, Lena Luthor showed up because uh, Biomax, the guy, Jack Sphere, is Lena Luthor's ex-boyfriend, so they kind of have a thing going. And Kara has to sort of figure out what his company is doing what his company Biosphere Technologies is doing and what they're doing with this whole Biomax thing that they're releasing. And it's a, a nano technology sort of thing that kills people or kills people that shouldn't know things they don't know, all that sort of espionage sort of stuff right. that, that goes on with companies and everything goes on in this episode. And it's, it's a pretty fun episode. I, I, I'm pretty it's, sure Google has that technology that you just mentioned. Yes, they they send the they send the nano swarms after you if you learn about certain certain things. The dark <laughs> secret behind Google: it's made of people. <laughs> oh God. Uh, but yeah, this was a really fun episode, and there was like this kind of fun side plot where um, Jimmy, who's still Guardian, uh, teams up with Win and Win's uh, girlfriend. I think her name's Lyra. Uh, she's like an alien that he met in that alien bar. Mm. And uh, she joins his, his little guardian team and uh, helps him fight some crime. Yeah, that's good. You always like crime fighting in your superhero show, am I right? I, this is like the only one where they actually show them fighting like street level criminals and they're not always super villains or anything it's easy to get lost in the shuffle isn't it of fighting crime and saving the world and jutting through time and space sometimes you just want to see a bank robber get punched yeah <laughs> word on that so this this was a good episode back you're feeling positive for where the rest of the season could be going yeah yeah I, i'm feeling really positive i i know at the end of this episode it was kind of like a tease that um uh, Terry Hatch's character showed back up, and oh. she's, uh, after killing her husband, Kevin Sorbo, mm -hmm. um, she came to Earth, and she's, I think she's posing as, like, a, like, a, a, a big company's boss or something, like, she, she, she's talking with Lena Luthor about buying something or something, I don't know what her end game is, she, 
posing as some big company or something. But she seems to be the villain for the big push of the last little bit of the show. I think so, yeah. I know the last couple of episodes are going to have General Zod in it. Oh, shit. Yeah, they cast him right, and it's an actor from Smallville and Man of Steel just to really confuse the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He looks really cool. I've seen set photos of him. looks really cool. Uh, how's his costume look? Does it look like classic Zod? What era are they drawing it's, on? Um, uh, I guess like like new Krypton Zob, you know, like that, that outfit, that general outfit he that's has. That's a good look. I like I that, that look. He, he doesn't have a goatee, though. Oh, that's unfortunate. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll be sure to draw one in, in my mind. Maybe maybe that's where <laughs> it ends. Like, after he gets beaten by Supergirl, he's like, I should draw, uh, you know, I should grow a beard is what I should do. I bet <laughs> That'll if I, work. I bet if I had a beard, I could win that fight. <laughs> I need, like, 90% more beard. <laughs> so, so good episode is what you're saying you enjoyed it it was yeah i guess from there we can move on to the other big cw superhero show the much awaited much screenshotted the flash season three episode 19 the once and future flash get it it's a reference to the once and future king mm-hmm so after multiple episodes wherein Barry learned the lesson of why he shouldn't screw with time and why he shouldn't use his powers to abuse the time stream, he decided what he really needed to do before the show went on break was just abuse time one last time <laughs> and everything just, will be fine. Just, 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 you know, molest it a little bit. Just a little Just, just a little bit. Just, <laughs> just, just stick your tip in to destroying time and space. <laughs> Man, you know, it's like Barry is an addict and abusing time travel is his vice. <laughs> and he's just been fiend in the whole time. In fact, like, oh no, uh, Caitlin turned into Killer Frost again. Barry, do you want to go after? He's just sitting there scratching. No, man, what I really got to do is travel in time. I'll travel in time and then I'll deal with it, I promise. <laughs> just, gotta look, just gotta put a little time travel under my gums is all I need. Just give me, just give me a little. <laughs> Wally, suit up and help me get some time travel. <laughs> I'm joking, but that's kind of the episode, wasn't it, Matt? It, yeah, it really was. It was, it was a a typical Flash logic episode. I wouldn't even call this Flash logic. I get the horrible feeling that maybe some Legends writers have come over and been like, oh, oh, you're doing a time travel episode, huh? Well, we do a whole time travel show so we can help you out. Yeah, we don't have a job anymore. Yeah, wouldn't, <laughs> we'll wouldn't, come write some episodes of Flash. Wouldn't that be some shit? Okay, Legends is over for the seasons, guys. Uh, whoever still wants to work, uh, you go over to the Flash writers' room and you help them out. <laughs> But, you know, they're just sitting there doing drugs, graffiti, and walls, all the Legends writers. <laughs> Time travel made easy. So, yeah, uh, Flash goes to a dark future central city, which is only like 10 years in the future. Something like, like 2024 or something. Right, which is funny. Whenever he said that, I couldn't help but hear 20, uh, 2099 every time he did. I'm like, oh my god, he's going all that time in the future. And I'm like, no, no, he's not, Joel. Stop auto-correcting in your brain. <laughs> but yes, and everything is crappy in the future, although admittedly we don't get to see much of the city. We see one really dirty alley, and that's about it. Yeah, and that could have been any dirty alley in any time. <laughs> it's true. Uh, the Top and uh, Mirror Master come back, which I felt they didn't get much play in their first episode, so it's nice to see them return here. Yeah, it's really great. The The one thing I don't like, though, is that, that Flash obviously knew who they were, so, like, why did he just stand around and, like, let Top use her powers on her? Not on just him? once, but multiple times. During <laughs> yeah, the <time>. yeah. <laughs> multiple times he's like, oh, if only I could get there and punch her out. If only I was fast or something. Man, I really wish I was fast. <laughs> if only. Now, hey, I'll say this, too. The actress who plays Top there is actually wearing a costume now, and it's made out of a bunch of colors and stripes, which is what the Top's costume looks like. Mirror Master still refuses to wear a costume. Yeah, he's still in his coat. Well, they, they, this isn't really Mirror Master. This is just some metahuman with Mirror Master's abilities. Right, he's not Scottish. He's not really Sam Scudder. I would, I would be fine if he just wore an orange shirt and a green tie. I'd be fine with that. Yeah. Like, look, that's all. I don't ask for much. Just put a couple colors in there so I know what's what. And, you know, he finds Cisco, and Cisco's all, all fucked up because it's a dark future, man. I've been waiting for you. 
He's got the robotic arms. He's and... got the ro he's gone full Luke Skywalker. He's gone double Luke Skywalker, in fact. <laughs> Not just one, but the other. And I gotta say, the bit with the robot hands was probably one of my favorite things about the episode. It was probably the best reveal. Because I'm sitting here being like, well, how the hell did the world go to shit in just ten years? Cisco, you have a costume. You can vibe. You have powers. Go do so. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah, everything kind of got fucked up because Cisco lost his hands. <laughs> yeah, I guess you can't then. And then they do a little more. They flash back to when he vibed his fight with Killer Frost and being like, yeah, we fought and she took my hands in that fight. And I'm like, all right, okay, they're bringing it back to this now. I like this. Killer Frost is clearly going to be an important character moving on in the future. Yeah, yeah. I, I dig that. Uh, what I, what I kind of went back and forth on, and I know you did too because I read your tweets, Emo Berry. Oh god, Emo Barry. <laughs> With his bad, long hair fringe. And what did you say on Twitter too, being like, man, he went through all the trouble of growing that long black hair, but he didn't grow a beard. Yeah, yeah, he, he like, he kept his hair really long and unkempt, but like, still shaved. You know, gotta keep shaving. Well, he's, I, I get itchy, I have this soft baby skin, don't you know? I'm such a baby <laughs> face, I can't grow a beard. Now, actually, here's the funny thing, Matt. If you follow Grant Gustin on Instagram, and I do, there were some pictures that came out of him with the big long wig and like a really wispy pencil thin mustache. So I think he tried to grow a beard, but couldn't do it and then cut it because the mustache looked stupid. And I'm like, you know what? Good on you. The mustache would have been silly and really would have hurt you trying to be all tortured and sad and everything. <laughs> and so, you know, we find out from future Barry that, you know, after Iris's death, everything went bad. He went into seclusion. He became, you know, like a weirdo hermit and everything. Yet, apparently it didn't all happen right away, because apparently he also defeated Savitar, but stopped being the Flash. Yeah, it, it is really weird. Like, so obviously, Iris was killed, and then he found that doctor who spent, like, eight years or something. Developing a speed trap. Yeah, developing a speed trap. Stop Savitar, then he became some homeless bum. And just quit. It's And it's funny, too, Barry, in the episode, like, past Barry, kind of echoes the audience where it's like, oh, I would never do that, I would never do any of these things. And I'm like, yeah, it's you're right, it's not in your character. Why are you making us watch it if it's not in your character, and if you agree and I agree? Yeah, exactly. It seems like this is a very improbable future. That's what they should have called this episode, Future Improbable. <laughs> <laughs> and then it gets even weirder because it's like, okay, he eventually, after much like, you know, beating it out of them and having to get the team back together, he learns what he wants to know about the speed trap. And it's like, okay, I guess I'll go home then. And only for Cisco to be like, no, you can't go. You can't ever go. You got to stay and help us. And all I could think, and I'm sure you think this too, Matt, he really doesn't because if he goes back and stops Savitar, this future will never happen and you won't have these problems. Yeah, and, and the thing is, like, he couldn't go home in the first place because he didn't have Kid Flash there to help him. Yeah, it was very and Kid And Kid Flash was the one to get him into the time stream because he couldn't create what couldn't create the, uh, the Vortex thing, but he couldn't in this future because Wally's, like, some weirdo disabled guy now. Yes, because he got into a big fight with Savitar, and actually... That leads to a theory I was kicking around on Twitter not like 15 minutes before we started. We are once again for Flash going ahead with the mystery of, oh, who is the speedster? Who is Savitar? And of course, the popular theories are Evil Future Barry, which I think mm -hmm. is the most obvious at this moment. Mm -hmm. Some people are saying Ronnie, by the way, that Killer Frost reacted to him at the end of this episode. I, I posit you this, Matt, and I posit this to the people in the comment section, too. I believe... And this is my theory. I believe that Savitar is actually an evil future Wally. It, yeah, it's it's definitely possible. I, I've kicked her in a theory that it's multiple people. Mmm, all tagging out. Since it's a suit, a right. like a, 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 a Iron Man type suit, so anyone could get into it. Yeah, wouldn't that be some shit? Multiple people. That that would be very Flash because even their twists have twists on them. Usually, for when you find out who the actual bad guy is at the end. 
Yeah. How about we ask who just texted you? Who who is Savitar? Savitar. Yeah. Hey. Uh, hey. Hey. Dad. What What do you think Savitar is? I know you're watching the <laughs> hockey game. Uh, uh, he, he says he doesn't give a shit, and uh, this is uh, this is why he doesn't come around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that just got dark. But uh, yeah, my Wally theory. Uh, the way I'm doing it is because think about it. Wally only got powers because of Doctor Alchemy and because of Savitar. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's one of those self-fulfilling time portal things. Wally, we see, has the potential to be faster than Flash. Uh, Wally's also kind of been neglected. Uh, he hasn't had the best training so far, and maybe the death of his sister is what eventually pushes him to become Savitar. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. So, so text, so watching himself kill his sister is what pushes him to become Savitar and kill his sister. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what messes him up. And that's why when that other Wally from this possible alternate time sees under the mask and sees Savitar, he sees himself and that's what freaks him out. Yeah, maybe. That's the in my ideal thing, that's what the twist would be because I got to say all the options we have now for who Savitar could possibly be will be pretty disappointing. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't want it to be Evil Future Barry because we've been pitching Evil Future Barry literally since season one. Mm -hmm. I don't really want it to be Ronnie, even though that would be kind of cool because they never said Ronnie Raymond was dead. They just said he was lost in that weird time portal thing. Yeah, I, I have no idea. I just hate the idea of bringing his character down a notch when you could bring him back as a hero in something. Yeah, yeah. Some people are saying maybe even, like, evil future alternate Eddie, but then I'm just like, no, nah, let's not do Eddie again. We already had a Thawne. Let's not have two Thawnes now. Yeah. Let's do something different. I mean, oh, I, I mean, we've gotten this far and we haven't talked about it. Uh, we got a new Flash costume in this one. Yeah, one that stuck around for this episode and we probably won't see for a very long time. That disappointed me because I'm like, oh, hey, you know, Barry's going to fight, uh, what is it, Mirror Master, and he's going to fight the top and, you know, uh, Cisco's going to give him this new suit to do, being like, oh, you need this new costume. I was going to give it to my guy, but he's he's a fuck, so he can't hack it. And then Barry's like, I'm going to wear this suit back in time and I'm going to use it now. That's really where I thought they were going to go with it, and then they didn't yeah. go that way. And I'm like, what the fuck's the point of making a new suit if he's not going to have it? Yeah, that, that's exactly how I thought they were going to do it. Like, he was going to have to wear this new suit, or, like, pretend to be the future Flash. Right. So he would have to wear the Flash's costume of that era. Yeah, they, they don't go that way. No. Yeah, so the once in future Flash... Had some fun moments, but was ultimately kind of disappointing. I, I hate that the moral of this episode was Barry being like, I need to stay and help my friends. So I left my friends to help my future friends so I can go back <laughs> and help my friends. <laughs> and I'm like, God damn it, Barry. Like, it, it doesn't it feel like this whole season he's just been learning the same lessons over and over again? Yeah, it's the same with every season. Every season, it's the same lessons over and over. You can you can match season one to every other season. You know, he, he fights a speedster. He's not fast enough. Wells tells him he can run fast enough. He runs fast enough and defeats the villain. That's it. Well, I mean, running fast enough, that's basically the bulk of every Flash story. But I get what you're getting at, Matt, where it's like it feels... But no pun intended, it feels like the show has been running in place since, like, the musical episode. Pretty much, yeah. Like, that was the one standout of this episode. I gotta say, a big bulk of this season has just kind of, like, uh, again, I'm not trying to make a pun here, they all kind of run together, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's very hard to remember individual episodes. I remember stuff that happened from season three, but I can't really remember individual moments. Meanwhile, you know, season one, season two, filled with great individual episodes. Yeah, de definitely. Yeah, but this this season does feel like it's it's all like the same episode every week. We're we're dangerously close. Well, I, well, I know I'm going to come out and say it. I think we're in a bit of a third season slump, which is something that happens to a lot of shows. Yeah, most shows, if they hit a slump, it will be in the third season. Mm hmm. I'm I'm hoping season four, because they've already said there won't be a speedster villain. I'm hoping they don't do another, like, uh, mystery villain. I hope we just get someone like, I don't know, like, The Thinker, because they dropped reference to The Thinker. 
Yeah, let's hope. Yeah, that's that's definitely the way I feel about this one. So yeah, once in future Flash is all right, I guess. We know the show can do better. Like that's the thing. Like you go back and you listen to old recordings of me and Matt talking about this show. We talked about it like it was the goddamn second coming. We're like, this is the best thing DC was doing for a bit. It was. It was. And yeah. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Um, you know, it's funny, they were fucking up in the comics, they were fucking up in the animated movies, they were fucking up in the live-action movies, this was like the one bright spot where you're like, yo, but Flash is really good, though. Now the comics are better, the animated movies go up and down, and you know, the live-action movies are the live-action movies. I don't know, man. I just don't know. Yeah. But uh, moving on from there, we have The Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Season 4, Episode 19, All the Madam's Men. Oh boy, this was a good episode. A lot of shit went down in this episode, of course, picking up from where the last one left off. Daisy got her powers back, and her and May uh, lead a big old escape from the Hydra Triskelion. Yeah, leading to, I I guess, Madame Hydra's death. Quote, unquote, crippling, coma-ing, whatever you <laughs> want to call it. Yeah. It's, it's funny, too, because when that happens to her, I'm like, oh, her eyes are going to open up and she's going to do some crazy shit because, you know, she's in charge of this virtual world. She doesn't have to play by the rules. Yeah. Oh, she actually does have to play by the rules? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she, she she's the admin, but not really. <laughs> yeah, she's the admin, but she can still get blocked. And boy, can she get blocked. <laughs> Yeah, like, like, I assumed she was going to, like, work her elite hacks or skills and be like, I am a god here. Yeah, I, I'm really surprised that didn't happen. I mean, I guess if she was a god there, she would have destroyed the shield guy sooner. What, what would have been stopping her from doing anything if she was a god there? They needed to put some, like, you know, uh, level of roadblock in her way. Yeah, well, I guess it also goes with her wanting to be human. That's true. And being and having access to all these godlike powers isn't being human. No, it's not. Yeah, that's 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 very profound, Matt. There, yeah, that's the thing about being human. You need limitations to be human. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you know they uh, they're fighting their way uh, out of it. It's a really great action scene. May does some sick ass flips that I quite enjoyed. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool fight scenes for May in this episode. Mm -hmm. May, who legitimately is superhuman just by being badass. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> My power is flips. <laughs> we uh, we even do something we haven't done in the last couple episodes. We actually get to step outside the framework and outside the simulation and see what's happening back in the real world. Yeah, and they're sort of building that device that, that Fitz is building in the framework that will allow them to make a real body for these uh, LMDs. Yeah, what a what a freaking comic book plot, huh? A robot put them in a virtual reality that was more real than real life, and now they're building a science device in the simulation that will let them break on through to the real world. Now, what do you think they might be setting that up so that, that we can have, like, good guy ward come into the real world oh, like man. that's a perfect perfect way to get him in dude good guy ward good guy trip just freaking anyone who was dead can come back again i really exactly. like that idea it's a shame poor bill paxton is dead in real life because it would have been a way to bring good guy bill paxton in ah uh, that would have been great speaking of ward and speaking of bill paxton we actually get the origins of of good guy ward in this universe although it's like good guy ward but he's also working for hydra but because he's a double agent in any world it's complicated basically we find out instead of bill paxton's character picking him up out of the academy it was victoria hand who picked him up out of the academy yeah and that's the reason why he is who he is that's the turning point and i'm like man is Victoria Hand alive in this world, too? Can we have Victoria Hand back? I feel that's another one of those characters they killed way too soon. Yeah, I, I hope she's still alive, I, though I don't think she is. No, I think if she was alive, we would have seen her by now. Victoria Hand could totally have been the Maria Hill of uh, TV show S.H.I.E.L.D. had they wanted to go that direction with her. Yeah, they, they could still bring her back, though. They That's, could still bring her back. You got this LMD technology, you could bring back fucking anybody who was dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the way they're going with it now. Uh, it's funny, we get to see Newsman Coulson. That's like their big power play at the end of the episode, where it's like, you know, we need to get in there. We need to, like, you know, help uh, disprove all of Hydra's lies, and we need to take our message to the people. Yeah, they take over a news station, and... Uh, 
broadcast their message and it kind of actually works it does you know it's funny too the agents of shield in this episode had very much the same sort of dilemma that barry had where you know uh daisy and Gemma are like okay so you know we know where to get out now of the world let's get out of the framework because now we know only for uh colson to be like no if we need if we're gonna beat our problems in the real world we need to beat them here as well and i'm like okay see there they have a lot of good reason to stay behind and to actually fix this world that's not the real world yeah yeah because it's gonna have an effect if they don't do it and i'm like see that was actually a good bit of writing both shows dealt with the same problem but this one actually had a better reason Mm mm-hmm I, you gotta love it too when a uh, newsman Coulson is decrying the evils of Hydra. He literally uses the term "alternative facts" to describe their lying to the people. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> I love. There's just no no fear in this show, and be like, yeah, you know what? If you use the term "alternate fa- uh, alternative facts," go fuck yourself. <laughs> you are no better than a goddamn robot in the framework. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, just you know, a, a lot of fun stuff happened this episode. The the ongoing tragedy of Mac and his poor daughter, like you know, that's going to be sad. Yeah, well, again, that machine's right there. <laughs> this, and that opens up a whole new thing of like, oh, my robot daughter, or maybe not my robot daughter, just my alternate reality daughter from a universe where a robot used a magic book to build the matrix <laughs> that's so fucking comic books isn't that <laughs> well yeah well yeah what part of this aren't you getting the evil robot wanted to be human so used a magic book to create the matrix and put a bunch of secret agents minds inside it <laughs> And then, and then an evil Russian built a machine on an oil platform, and then they all fought their way out. <laughs> what part of this is or aren't you getting? This is all perfectly normal shit. <laughs> uh, also, too, I think another thing we got to mention, uh, Evil Fitz continuing to stay evil. Oh, my God, I love Evil Fitz. Evil Fitz is really... I hope they split the difference on Evil Fitz. Like, Evil Fitz downloads himself into a robot, and so you've got, like, an evil twin of Fitz running around. <laughs> Oh, that'd be so good. And his dad as well in this in these episodes is so good because his dad is like the only one he's scared of. Yeah. Because like there's that moment where he kind of yells at his dad and his dad like like says don't don't yell at me. He gets all like kind of cowery and scared and everything of him. Yeah, he's like bitch, please. And it's funny. I'm like, hey, I thought the framework was supposed to be everyone's dream come true. Oh, it's your dream come true, but they can only change someone so much. And even uh, Radcliffe says that later, being like, yeah, you were a piece of shit in real life, and you're a piece of shit in this perfect simulation too. <laughs> Yeah, that uh, yeah, Fitz's dad is like becoming a really interesting character because he's basically a secondary villain now. Yeah, and it also leads to the idea of being like, oh well, if this is just the imaginary Fitz's dad that exists in the framework, that means when we get out, we could potentially meet Fitz's dad for real. Yeah, definitely. They opened the door for that one, and yeah, there's some good stuff. Radcliffe, again, continues to kind of grow and change as a character from like a guy who's mostly responsible for all this bullshit but is suffering worse than anybody. And even now he kind of shows his loyalty to Daisy and them by not turning against them and not giving them up. Yeah. He he's, he's kind of playing both sides of the fence he's, a little bit. He's very complicated. Radcliffe. I'm a fan of complicated characters. Yeah. He's a great character. I never thought that like, that's a character I would like so much. Like I'm liking Radcliffe so much now where I'm like, Hey, put him in the comics. Maybe. Yeah, that, that'd be really great. Like, actually, I'm, I'm surprised they really haven't since, like, people like Ward and everyone are in there now. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, all those people made the jump now, he'd probably be the next one to make the jump. If they, mm-hmm. ever, if they ever do another S.H.I.E.L.D. book, and I'm sure they will. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, that, that was all the Madams, man. Really strong episode with a really strong ending, too. I like Coulson pulling out his badge and being like, I am an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Very reminiscent of the first time he showed up in Iron Man, too, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Nice little callback. He's he's come a long way, hasn't he, that Phil Coulson? He has. Now let him be in one of the movies again, please. Let let that happen. <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying it has to be Infinity War. I'm just saying down the line, let the Avengers know he's alive, please. <laughs> That's all I want. <laughs> please, please justify my love and let them know he's alive at some point. 
<laughs> now, uh, moving on from there, we were going to have two other shows, but Matt and I have been so goddamn busy this week with comics. I haven't watched Archer yet, nor has uh, Matt watched Doctor Who yet. No, no, I haven't. We're, we're a little far behind, but we're making good time, so I guess with that we can head on over to uh, Samurai Jack, Season 5, Episode 6 from this week. Yes, and, uh, getting close to the end there. We are. It's hard to believe that it's taken us this long to get here. This this was almost an entire Ashi-focused episode, and also one giant nostalgia boner fest for fans of Samurai Jack. Boy, was it ever. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Ashi on the lookout for Jack, trying to find him after he wandered off, and she essentially walks through the world and meets a bunch of different people who Jack saved and whose lives they've touched and who now vow to help him overthrow Aku when the time is right. Yeah, and the, so many characters we've seen before and everything. We meet the freaky mammoths. We meet the ravers. There's a whole scene in, like, the raver club kid clan. <laughs> Yeah, that was great. And we see and we see the leader of the Ravers is again an old woman now cuz 50 years has passed, but it's one of the original Ravers who remembers Jack saving them. <laughs> and that like Jack has become like a legendary figure in the world now, like almost like a Christ figure across the world. Once again, they said a samurai came and he saved our people. Yeah. The, the, uh, who else was there? Oh, God, the Three Archers, like, uh, probably one of the best episodes they did. They uh, make reference to the Three Archers, and we get to see what they're up to. Yeah, that, oh, my God, that was great. I'm just like, oh, wow, are they actually doing that? They're actually doing the Three Archers. Uh, oh, they do, uh, they do uh, the Samurai, like the crazy black exploitation Samurai who now runs the bad guy bar. Yeah, he's literally just Afro Samurai. He's literally just Afro Samurai. I think that guy might actually predate Afro Samurai, actually. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, maybe not the manga, but I know he definitely predates uh, the show. No, oh, okay. But yeah, he's literally Afro Samurai. So, so many freaking characters show up. Uh, freaking Scaramouche comes back, the robot assassin. Yeah, yeah, and he's just a head. <laughs> just a head now. He has like a straight up comedy side plot, and you're like, oh yeah, I forgot. Samurai Jack could be really funny. The last couple episodes have been super serious. That was kind of like Tartakovsky being like, hey, we can be funny too, don't forget. Yeah, yeah, it can be really funny. And it was really, really funny. I, I wonder what pl uh, part Scaramouche is going to play, because clearly he was important enough to bring back. Hey, we'll probably get another body and end up fighting Jack in one of the last episodes. Yeah, or maybe joining with him. Wouldn't that be fun? That'd be pretty cool. This, uh, as I mentioned before, this was a very ashi focused episode. We learn, uh, like that whole black body stocking that she wears. Yeah, that actually has a very dark origin. Mm-hmm. That's not a suit. That's her skin that has been charred that color. Yeah. Because the mothers of Aku, that weird cult, they burn their children ritualistically. Yeah, so much so that her, her like, body from, like, the neck down is just black. That was pretty fucked, wasn't it? Like, a level of child abuse where you're like, god damn. Yeah, and it's, it's in, like, a cartoon as well. I know, Jesus right? Christ. <laughs> I know. And it's like, again, they're kind of saying, you know, they're drawing a parallel between her childhood and Jack's childhood, where, yeah, Jack lost out on his childhood because he was traveling the world, training to become the greatest warrior ever. But he genuinely had a good time, and he met a lot of nice people who were his friends. He wasn't horribly abused like this. And also, Jack chose that life. This girl didn't get to choose the life she was given. Yeah, they're doing a good job of, like, showing that sort of difference, how it's kind of the same, but not. Parallels. They're drawing a lot of great parallels. Yeah. And she even gets a new costume, too. She uh, she goes full Poison Ivy, dressing in vines and leaves and everything. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That was fun. And we finally get the answer to who the hell are these weird samurai ghosts that have been giving uh, Jack a hard time since the thing started. We did. They are the warrior's past and basically manifestations of Jack's own need to commit seppuku. Yeah, which he tries to do this episode. Yeah, wow, you want to talk about how, Like, in an episode that was mostly all, ha ha ha, you know, fun times, ha ha ha, you know, uh, remember all these characters from Samurai Jack. The big thing is Ashi needs to stop Jack from killing himself. 
Yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, wow. But, you know, very samurai is what that is. Oh, you know, yeah. You have failed, you dishonored, you need to take your own life is what you need to do. And he eventually discovers at the end of this, no, you have made a difference, you haven't dishonored yourself. And the big takeaway at the end is like, okay, now we need to get my sword back. Yeah, so I imagine... I guess maybe next episode or the episode after that, we'll be getting Jack's sword back. Yeah, or to even just figure out, like, okay, how did you lose it in the first place? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. Yeah, that's that's definitely a big thing, you know. Uh, how did you lose it and why haven't you tried to get it back by now? Yeah. It's, it's fun to see Jack with a companion. I know I mentioned it early on, but it bears repeating. There's totally a ton of shades of, like, Dark Knight Returns and even, like, Logan the movie. Ashi is Jack's Carrie Kelly, more or less. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And it really is. I mean, it's set, like, what, 50 years after the original? It's mm -hmm. it's an older Jack, it's, you know? It's the dark Jack Returns, and, like, you gotta think, oh, Joel, you're drawing too much thing. No, I'm not, actually, because Dark Knight Returns is a Frank Miller comic. Ronin is another Frank Miller comic, which, guess what, Matt, is about a samurai in the future. Yeah, who knew? <laughs> so clearly Tartakovsky loves him some, like, Frank Miller and Dark Knight Returns. Even even the bit in the opening where Jack says, gotta get back, back to the past, and it's all dark, and you only see the light of his blade, and it's raining on him. You can't tell me that doesn't look like a panel from Sin City. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the good thing is, though, Tartakovsky likes old Frank Miller, not yes. new frank miller <laughs> wacky frank miller yeah he likes the good years of frank miller and he clearly likes other cartoons and he likes comedy and he can have a laugh and he can have a lot of other things i yeah i gotta say it's gonna be really sad when this samurai jack is all said and done right because you'll finally know it's done and it's never coming back yeah it, it's gonna be really strange especially since there's what like four episodes left it was very short i can't remember if it was eight or if it was ten I think, I think it was, it was only 10. 10. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when it's done, it's going to be done forever. Yeah. Or maybe it does so well, they're like, okay, Tartakovsky, what do you want to do next? Pitch us, pitch us another show. I, I wouldn't mind. I'd like to see him just leave this be, and that be the end, and just make something else. Yeah, because he's had an interesting history, Tartakovsky. He had a symbiotic titan. Did you ever watch that? I I did watch a couple episodes, so I know what you're talking about. It was a very similar kind of like, you know, genre mishmash of like, you know, giant mech and like teen high school comedy and everything together. And actually had a lot of the same voice actors it had here. Yeah, cool. You know, I, I'd like to see, I wonder if anyone's like, hey, are you ever going to revisit Symbiotic Titan? Because very similarly, that one ended only after a couple seasons and we never got any answers to any of the questions. <laughs> Well, maybe they'll maybe they'll come back on it after the success of this show. I don't think Symbiotic Titan had anywhere near the following Samurai Jack did. <laughs> or yeah, no, but you know, Gendy Tartakovsky, you know, what else is he doing besides you know Hotel Transylvania? <laughs> Which I really like that first one. I think it's a shame they never brought him back for any of the sequels. As soon as I heard he wasn't coming back for any of those sequels, I'm like, well, fuck then. Really, I thought he he was at least going to do like number three or something is that the thing did they bring him back for three i might have stopped listening at a point oh uh, I, th I i think maybe it was like number one and two right okay i i know for the longest time what tartakovsky's really wanted to do and like this has almost happened several times but they keep shutting him down what he really wanted to do was a new like cgi popeye movie That'd be pretty cool. Apparently he loves Popeye. He really wanted to do it, but they shut down his ideas like several times. Cool. I'm ho I'm hoping cool. I'm hoping after this he'll finally have like enough juice to be like, yeah man, let me let me do this now. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Let me let me finally do the thing. I'm actually looking on his IMDb page now. Oh, yeah, he is actually involved in at least the writing of Hotel Transylvania 3. He's in pre-production for that. No, oh, okay then. Uh, what about director credits? Uh, yeah, okay, he'll also be directing Hotel Transylvania 3, I guess. Oh, no, and he did too, too. Okay, yeah, I was wrong. That's yeah, a, that's yeah. a shame. Like, like Hotel Transylvania 1 is, like, pretty cool, where it's like, yeah, there were some good ideas in there. 2 is like, yep, this suffers from every sequel problem. I hope with 3 they, uh, they learned their mistakes. I haven't seen any besides number 1. That's fine, you don't need to see 2. 2 is ultimately pretty disappointing. 
No, good. T- two is every sequel problem. Here's hoping they don't fuck it up with three. So on that note, everyone, now that we've started talking about Hotel Transylvania, <laughs> I, th- I think it's safe we can bring this one to a close. We're not a movie podcast, Matt. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> that, that'll be the next thing. Coming in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> Caped film. <laughs> the, the thing is, I don't get to see as many new movies because I'm busy with all the comics and everything and shit. The only new movies I get out to see most of the time is usually a comic book movie. <laughs> That's like really the only ones I ever get out to see. Although shit, we're at the point now where there's so many new comic book and nerd movies coming out. We could do a goddamn podcast pretty much every week. The, the, this this year so far, I've probably gone to the movies every second week since the start of uh, since the end of january maybe yep sounds about right you you've already gotten to see guardians of the galaxy you lucky so and so yeah it was a good film lucky lucky good so film. and so we'll we'll be talking more about that on the uh comic multiverse coming soon so be sure to check that out when it happens yeah and on that note, everybody, we can bring this one to a close. Thank you so much for listening. As always, down in the comments section below, tell us what was your favorite uh, TV moment from this week. What are you looking forward to in the weeks to come? And if you want to download the show, carry it around with you, always be sure to head on over to the Comic Multiverse Sound pl- uh, Cloud page where you can find that show and also find Cape TV and a lot of other fun shit that Matt and I are doing. Be sure to follow me at Cape Joel. Be followed to, be sure to follow Matt over at... I'm going to get this in one go, damn it. <laughs> no more stroking out. You- you can follow me over on Fortress of Solitude. Yes, yes, go do that. And uh, until next time, everyone, uh, keep on watching. Bye-bye. See ya.